Welcome to the Halloween 2013 special of Wally is a series. Brogan Hayes from Movies.ie. Rory Cushion from Entertainment.ie. Mary Burke from Brownback Films. Thank you very much, Brogan, for telling me where Mary's from. And <laughs> Brian from like whatever. Everywhere. Like everything. 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 This whole thing. Yeah. Uh, this particular special is about the best and worst horror films of Excuse of the me. year. They have so, so there's been a lot of good ones. Ooh, scary. And a lot of bad ones. Ooh, scary in a different way. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we're focusing on the three best and three worst of the year so far. Yep. So, at number three. <laughs> oh. Ooh, very like this. Why the lights got off? Did you forget to pay the power bill again? Oh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Well, now that we're Illuminated. It's sufficiently Again, lit. Whatever, whatever's happened here, we'll come back to it. It's fine, I'll talk to the ESP during the week, it's fine. We still have the electricity to plug the cameras into. <laughs> still work. Batteries are a wonderful thing. So, third best horror movie of 2013 was... Citadel! For those of you who haven't seen or heard of it, which is understandable because it was quite a small release. Yeah, it was actually. Yeah. Uh, it is about an agoraphobic father. Yep. Who single for father? The, for those of you who don't know what agoraphobic means, oh, yeah, cool. it's um, someone who has a fear of open spaces. So basically, he's just under self-imposed house arrest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, his wife was is killed very early in the movie uh, by some youths. Youths. Um, pesky youths. And he has like a very young baby and he's living in a high rise kind of terror block of flats or whatever. And he's being pestered by the youths again, youths. except that they're now slightly more monstrous and you're never sure whether it's his fears that is making him see them that way or if they're they actually are actually monsters. Way, yeah. um, there's a bit of, tiny bit of controversy, controversy about it, saying that it was kind of like class ist warfare or something like that you know the very poor youths well, were yeah. acting out against the slightly more affluent yeah. people like you know people can make an argument about anything really at the yeah. end of the day you know you could be saying that jackass presents grandpa bad grandpa grand grandpa what is about um johnny knoxville picking on people who aren't smart enough to notice that it's him under the makeup i mean you know you can mm. say that about anything so, but and also it's a good thing that like like horror like sci-fi should have some kind of subtext to it. Mm. So there's a, a bit more than just you know boo. And uh, a good film always means that you've something to talk about in it as well. Like mm. you know those worst films are the ones that you come out of and you just go well. well it's over. Yeah. Uh, but it was quite scary in parts. Um, the visuals were like really oppressive, and I think it was an Irish director, Brian. Yeah, it was an Irish director. Yeah. Uh, yeah, directed by an Irish guy, Kieran Foy. Uh, so I'd be quite interested to see what he does next, if he's given any money to do, you know, whatever he does next. Uh, so that's the third best one of. 2013? Yeah. Yeah. Third worst one. Third worst one was The Purge. The Purge. Mm. This isn't exactly a horror film. By some people's definitions. Well, we were arguing about this before we, before we started rolling. What yeah. constitutes a horror film? Um, so, some people view what I would class as a thriller to be a horror film because it builds tension and paranoia and all that sort of stuff. If you're doing that to me, I'm doing that to you. I was doing it because you were talking. I was putting the spotlight on you. <laughs> um, but I think the. There's so many subgenres in horror as well. Like horror is sort of a blanket term, and then you've got the subgenres of horror. You've got torture, torture, horror, and you've got gore, and you've got psychological horror. So it's you know supernatural, all this stuff. So it's kind of an open term. Mm. Mm. Uh, this one is set slightly in the future where all crime has been pretty much eradicated, uh, except for one day, one night a year for twelve hours when all crime is legal, Mischief and you can. Do whatever you like in those 12 hours, murder, rape, pillage, whatever you want. Uh, With no repercussions. Exactly, yeah. And people have bought security systems to lock their houses down so they're not affected by the madness outside. But one family lets a man who's about to be murdered into their house 
and the people who want to murder him then try to break into the house and kill him and subsequently try to kill the family. That's quite a good um, idea for a horror film. Fantastic setup. Because there's a there's a night in England. It's either the night before Guy Fawkes Night or the night before Halloween. That's mischief night, and it's you know one of those nights where the the mischievous spirits are said to walk the earth, and that's kind of playing on that whole mm. tradition. So it's a really really good setup for a film. Unfortunately, it's not scary <laughs> at all. Uh, Ethan Hawke is in it, as is Lena Headey from Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Um, it's just it was uh, yeah. It's just another home invasion thriller, just with a slightly interesting. Everything around the film we saw was really interesting, but unfortunately, they decided to focus on this one really uninteresting aspect of mm. the story. So that was a disappointment. It's more bad to disappointment than actually just plain bad. But it is also just kind of bad. So the second best horror movie or scary movie of 2013 so far has been the remake of Evil Dead. <laughs> Featuring that lady from that suburbatory show. Oh yeah, her. And some other actors who you probably haven't heard of before, probably mm -hmm. won't hear of again. Mm -hmm. Directed by Fede Alvarez, who directed a very good short film that you can see on YouTube called Panic Attack. Um, very, very gory. Uh, very, hmm. It's kind of an interesting setup because normally kids are stupid and like, let's go to the cabin in the woods for the weekend and we go, it's so much fun. Uh, and no one, I don't know anyone who thinks, who would think going to a cabin in the woods for the weekend would be good without one of them at least being killed. Mm -hmm. They have a good setup in that one of the girls is a heroin addict. So she has heroin addiction and they bring her out here to take the, so she has cold turkey. Mm, clever. Has some nice cold turkey. No, no. And then she doesn't want heroin anymore. No, oh, right, okay. That's, is that how I understand that's... that Betty Fork is just lots of turkey blacks. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, yes, very violent. Um, not terribly like scary unless you are scared of violence then then it is actually possible. <laughs> but if it, it's good for the gore hounds but anyone looking for a bit more psychological depth might be disappointed mm. remake of 1981 film is it yeah. 1981 um which i haven't seen the remake but i did you know people who will watch twice the series will know that i'm a gigantic was and i did actually watch the original Evil Dead on my own. Wow, was it? Yeah, I, it was a huge deal for me, and I just thought it was one of the funniest films I have seen in a long time. Um, so I think, you know, it, taking out the kitschiness of the Evil Dead and ramping up the scares can only be a good thing because it is actually a really good story, and it spawns so many other horror films, not least Joss Whedon's Cabin in the Woods from last year. Exactly. Mm. Second worst. Horror film, scary movie Ooh. of the year was Texas Chainsaw 3D. So bad. <laughs> so bad. Let's, like the original was set in 78, I think. Late 70s, yeah. Uh, at the end of the film, for anyone who has seen it or hasn't, it's not really much of a spoiler. Um, you know, one kind of gets away and then Leatherface chases her. This film starts directly after, like minutes after those events, hmm. but it's set today. I, There's no explanation I, as to where those 30 odd years have gone, it just is now today. Time travels a bitch, unintentional time travels a bitch. I don't know what to say. Yeah. Uh, and there's all this other stuff where it's just like, oh you're related to him okay. because we need you to be. So it sounds like Texas Chainsaw Massacre fanfic in which the person who wrote it hadn't seen it in a while and mm. just went with what they remembered. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Mm. It's half like a fan and then half just making it up as they, as they go along. <laughs> uh, I'd like with, to with about the, the same budget of this shoe, when I ask. Oh, wow. Like, there's a big massive house fire and it does legitimately look like I said this in an earlier review. Someone just has a lighter and goes, <laughs> up to the camera. And we're back here like, ah, this is my budget. <laughs> The scariest movie of 2013 so far has been The Conjuring. Oh, oh Jesus Christ, you guys! Yeah. My flash bulbs! Ah. It's a rave now. <laughs> uh, the Conjuring, directed by James Wan, who did the quite good Insidious and then not all that great Insidious Chapter Two. It's now going off to direct Fast and Furious 7. Yeah, I knew there was a Fast and Furious connection there. Yeah. You know, it's um, going to be the scariest Fast and Furious movie ever made. <laughs> so many cars. <laughs> um, so much homoeroticism. Oh, ah, God. oh my God, I just have to 
Um, That's Middle America right Patrick, there. Yeah, Patrick Wilton <laughs> and Vera Farmiga are a couple who debunk kind of ghost stories or paranormal activity or whatever. And they're able, up to a point where they're able to debunk everything. It's like, no, look, see, it's fake. And then they get to this house that's owned by Lily Taylor and Ron Livingston and their five daughters, I think they have. And they can't debunk it because it is a real ghost. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Uh, in real life, they're the same couple who went and sorted out the Amityville horror situation. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it is classic kind of old school callback stuff to like 70s scary house stuff. Um, and it is properly, 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 properly scary. It's like a really good ghost train. It's not probably going to stick in your mind for very long. It's not mm -hmm. one of those horrors where you're like, I'm never sleeping again. Does not like the rain? No, if that's your thing, if that's, that's, what, if that's crap, what's embedded in your mind for me, for me, it's the Blair Witch Project. Mm -hmm. I can't go to the woods anymore because oh. of that one. Certainly not with a camcorder. Certainly, which is why well, I used to only go to the woods with a camcorder. <laughs> and then ruined it. For the dogging. Mary, <laughs> you know, that's where we met. And they're already talking about a part two because it made so much money. Mm, there was a movies.ie screening where we had tickets to give away on movies.ie and I was down there for the screening and offered repeatedly to go in and I was just like, I absolutely point blank refused to go in there. I went in and watched no. the trailers that were shown before the film and then walked out and there was a couple of my friends in there and they were like, oh, I completely left. Have, have you met me? There is no way I would sit through that film. I am a gigantorobus. Gigantorobus. Mm. Worst horror film of the year is also usually one of the worst films of the year, and in this case so far it is the case. Quite a compliment to be the worst horror film of the year. And, and that the worst film of the year. Yeah, and that today. compliment goes to... The Last Exorcism Part 2. <laughs> it's not even so bad. That like it's war it warrants a viewing mm. just to see how bad it is. Mm. It's something that like Netflix would put up as a recommendation, and even people on Netflix are like, "Have ah, there?" <laughs> no, just don't. I did see what they tried to make a viral um, promo for the film of this girl just walking backwards into like hair salons and stuff. <laughs> that was terrible. And then this girl would appear behind them, like bending over backwards. Okay. We're not, we were not getting that herded. Good. <laughs> um, like bent over backwards, like in a silent scream sort of thing, and they'd jump, and everybody else in the salon would be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. That, that's, that's not there, you're imagining stuff. So, so it's kind of. Anticlimactic, it sounds. Yeah, yeah, because they were just like, oh, okay, well, if there's nothing there, that's fine, carry on with my hair. So, not a great promo, as the promos go. Not a great film as films go. Right. So here we are. Yeah. Uh, so they're the three we suggest you go to see and the three we suggest you avoid at all costs. Mm -hmm. um, keep an eye out for future review. Carrie is still to come this year. And um, in I... fear. Oh yeah. 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 Mm. Did you see the viral video for Carrie? Yeah. The coffee? Yeah. Lady? Yeah. Quite clever. Uh, so until the best and worst of October, which should be soon. Yep. Yeah. That's been broken. That's been Rory. That's been Mary Dee. Ooh, Mary Dee. That's been Brian. That's been Brian. Bye. Bye. And that. This has been Why So Serious.